Are you frustrated when people arrive late at your meetings? Or your classes sort of just wander into the class whenever they want to? Or perhaps you're sitting in an auditorium waiting for your conference to start? I get it. But it doesn't have to be that way. And that's exactly what this video is all about and to show you how to fix these issues. Your time is precious and no one wants to waste their time. So imagine, what would it be possible if we could transform your classes, your meetings, your training rooms, your conferences? In this video, I'm going to share two things. Number one, I'm going to share my number one favorite strategy for motivating people to turn up on time, meetings, classes, conferences, and so forth. And number two, I'm going to share three of my favorite case studies that will demonstrate to you that you can do this too. But first, I want to paint a picture. I'm a university lecturer in the 1990s. And I've got a group of 20, 25 people turning up. Now, if you're not a teacher or a lecturer, translate this into your context. You get the idea. It's the top of the hour is when the class is meant to start, but the students arrive five, 10 or more minutes later because that's just what every other class seems to do. They wait around until most, if not all people have arrived. But I was impatient. I had a lot of things I wanted to share. And so what I discovered was this thing called the unofficial start. And this is what I mean. At the top of the hour, often my room would already be empty. So I'd get there a little bit early, maybe five, 10 minutes early and set something up. It might be an activity. It could be a video. It might be a book that I'm reading, something that would actually engage the students as soon as they arrived in the door, in the room. And here's what I noticed. Apart from it being fun and productive and it invited the group to interact and it really kicked off all of these classes in a really powerful, positive way. But this was the most important part. In a 14 week semester for two subjects over the course of seven years, so I trialed this for 14 subjects effectively. By about the fifth week, I never had another late student. That's right. And why? Well, we use the term now, FOMO, but the fear of missing out. Here's what happened. You arrive two, five, 10 minutes late and you discover there's something happening in the room or that something has happened in the room and you figure that you've missed out and you want to be a part of it. It's positive, it's energetic and they feel that they've missed out. Without me ever having to say, hey dude, you need to be here on time, it internally motivated them to actually arrive, if not on time, a little bit early so they didn't miss out. So what exactly is an unofficial start? Now, people often get confused when they come along to one of my trainings and they notice that I'm using a puzzle or a game or some other exercise that's interactive. They think that they are the unofficial start, but they're wrong. Yes, they are being used as a strategy for an unofficial start. But in fact, there's a strict definition that I've given to what an actual unofficial start is. An unofficial start is any strategy that facilitates early engagement and interaction and amplifies the purpose and productivity of your group and or program. Okay, so there are two keys about that rather dry definition. The first is early engagement and interaction. Any strategy that engages your group early and invites them to interact. It's not enough just to simply engage them, but that they've got an opportunity to interact. That will help you unofficially start. And two, it amplifies the purpose of your program um, or your meeting or whatever it is, the reason that you're bringing your group together. It's not about just filling in time. Yeah, there are lots of things you could do to fill in time, but the unofficial start should be connected to your program, not just something you've tacked on at the beginning. So when you make it relevant to the purpose of the meeting, or there's some way that you could segue to it, even if it is just a fun game or a puzzle, it just makes the whole gathering a lot more meaningful for your group. Okay, so that's all good in theory, but what does that actually look like? Well, first of all, notice this little link up the top here. Click that when you're ready and it will take you to a page filled with lots and lots of different ideas that I've used, you know, practically, you know, firsthand that have been wonderful unofficial starts. I'm going to share two or three of them with you now. Now, long before I was a lecturer at a university, I'd spent a lot of time as an intern training with my mentor, Carl Ronke, who sadly now departed, but he was considered the guru of venture programming. And we were leading a program together. 
and I don't know, there was about 30 people who were expected to turn up and we only had about 15 or 20, like it just didn't seem like enough to actually get started even though the start time had passed. And this is what I noticed. Carl just opened up a big bag of short lengths of rope, threw it out in the middle of the room and then basically said something like, hey, invite you all to take yourself a rope, find someone perhaps you don't know, if you don't know them, introduce yourself and teach them a knot that you know. Whoa, that just blew me away. Now, I thought we were just simply filling in time, but then what happened was the energy exploded. Not only did people then start interacting, they were connecting, but they were actually teaching one another stuff, which in this context, for this particular program, was related to the things that we were going to be teaching. We may not have been teaching the knots that they were showing one another, but some of them were and it allowed these people to interact and build energy. And before we knew it, we had another 10 or 15 people arrive and the program got started. But in fact, it unofficially got started at the moment that Carl dropped that bag in the center. So my question to you is, what does tying knots mean for your program? Okay, you probably don't deal with rope in your program, but what would tying knots actually mean for you? So if maybe you're coming together for the purposes of strategy, there might be a question or maybe a quick video or something that's related to the process of developing strategy. Or maybe you could have just a fun little game, imagining that strategy, the word, is actually an acronym and have some fun creating that. I just made that up right now. It could be anything, but notice how it's connected to the purpose of your meeting. It engages people and it can absolutely be a lot of fun, especially if you're doing something like making up an acronym. In this case study, I felt a bit like a fish out of water. <laughs> Literally, uh, I was invited by a major association of surf riders throughout Australia to come and teach their bronze dozzy men and women, surf leaders all, to teach them how to engage the children they were working with. Now, they definitely did not approach me to be able to learn anything about surfing because I know nothing about that space, but I do know how to engage people. And here's what occurred. This was their problem, is that they would start at, let's say, 8.30 in the morning on a Saturday, and their parents were really eager to get a good parking spot outside their favorite coffee shop, so they dropped the kids off early to the surf lesson. Now, you couldn't go out into the water because not everyone was there, and that didn't even seem safe if you had to always pop out of the water to greet the next student who would turn up. And they didn't know what to do. And of course, there was always those kids who turned up late, which of course compressed the amount of time that you would have to teach whatever that lesson was, in this case, surfing. They needed something to break that circuit. The unofficial start was then introduced to them. And like I introduced this in the first oh, five, 10 minutes of my program, and it was a two day training and they got all their money's worth in that first 10 minutes. It just broke the mold. So what we discovered, there were all these different activities that were low supervision, but on the sand, not in the water, just from a safety point of view, that were the kids were eager to arrive to be a part of early. And again, I don't know what the stats were, but they quickly discovered that a lot more people, children were turning up on time. So again, listen for the unofficial start here. It had absolutely nothing to do with surfing, but everything to do with surfing because it allowed them to use their full hour or hour and a half actually doing the surfing because the kids were engaged and motivated to turn up on time. And here's the other thing, is that they noticed the relationships built between the students helped them out in the water. They just weren't on their own. If you didn't know anything about another one of those students, you wouldn't care whether they came off the board or not, or if they were in trouble, or yeah, maybe you would, but you get the idea. By actually doing something that purposefully invited them to engage and interact with each other, it actually translated really positively onto the water when they actually did their lesson. This third case study has come up so often in my experience, I feel like I wanna tear my hair out when I'm a participant in the middle of this experience. I'm sure you've had this too. How often have you sat in an auditorium, you're waiting for the MC to start, you notice on the clock it's already five or 10 minutes past, and if you were to add up all of the money, you know, the salaries alone of the people sitting in the auditorium simply waiting, that's a really expensive mistake, an error. In my experience, just a poor excuse of not knowing what else to do. 
So for example, just last weekend, I was part of a big conference for about 80 or 90 people. And it's first thing in the morning and it's Saturday after a big night out. And so we know that people aren't gonna be turning up on time. Yet, here is a lost opportunity if we don't do something about that that could actually make that experience more productive. So what I asked them to do, because I was gonna be presenting later in the program, I said, hey, give me that 10 minutes before the top of the hour to actually engage those who are here and it'll help those people out in the foyer to go, oh, what's going on? And they'll actually enter into the room and hopefully we'll get started closer to time than if we just simply waited for most people to come in. And it worked like a charm. The amount of energy that was developed in that first five or 10 minutes before the official starting time was like a magnet to all of those people on the outside that were brought in, wondering what the heck is going on. And I, again, I, don't, I didn't police the numbers as they were coming in, but as I looked at all the empty seats in the room get filled, I reckon we were very close to being completely full by about the official starting time or maybe a minute start uh, over that time. So again, consider, where are you waiting? Perhaps it's in a conference where you could spend that time. Maybe there's a technical issue that's happened to me as well, where I'm in the middle of a keynote, something goes down, you could just simply wait, or you could take that moment to actually invite people to interact. And it could be as simple as, hey, find someone next to you, before you and behind you, and answer your response to this question, for example. There are lots of things that can be done, but don't waste that opportunity, because not only is it really costly, but it costs also in an intangible sense, the opportunity to build not only energy, but the relationships within your group as well. Okay, I've got a bonus for you. I'm gonna give you one more. I've just provided you with three case studies, but remember that link from earlier, it's also in the notes below. You can actually learn about a whole lot more actual face-to-face -face unofficial starts that I've used with groups all over the world to build uh, productive, meaningful starts to my programs. But here's another bonus I'm gonna provide you. Go to playmeo.com forward slash activities. And from there, look for energizers and then filter down to those that only take a minute or two. That could be all that you need to be able to kick off your next meeting, classroom, training, whatever the occasion is that you're gathering a group, Start with a question of the day or do a little game called gotcha or maybe paradigm shift. They're fun, they're short, and they are very easy to segue into the purpose of your gathering without any issues. And if you do have a question about, oh, how do I make this particular activity uh, work for the purpose of my meeting? Add a comment below. I love that stuff. I will lean in, I'll help understand what your question's about and give you at least two or three ideas of ways you could link that specific activity, game, puzzle, whatever it is, that unofficial start strategy to the purpose of your meeting. So challenge me. See if you can give me a suggestion that would work for that purpose. Whoop, and you need to do it because I need to check my messages in just a second. So what are your favorite unofficial starts, no matter what you call them. Some people call them a soft start and you know the, the early icebreakers. It doesn't really matter what you call them, but what's your favorite way of unofficially starting your program? And don't forget, I am just a comment away. Anything you can add down below in the comments, uh, I will absolutely 100% respond to you. Whether it's just a kind word or a way in which this message resonated for you, or maybe you've got a question and I would love to be able to, to tackle that with you. In fact, all of this content will just add to the collective wisdom of our community of group leaders and facilitators around the world. Hey, if you've loved this video or found something that really resonated for you, could you do me a favor and like it? That would be awesome. And if you happen to like this content and would like to get some more, hit the subscribe button and indeed the notification bell because then you'll be alerted the next time we upload uh, our next video, which is roughly speaking once every week. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have fun out there.